Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Sarah, Nick's behind the camera, and these two are our little dogs, Dizzy and Charlie. And we are currently in our lockdown location here in sunny Andalusia. Yes, we've been here for the last almost three months. 12 weeks ago, we were in Portugal. We had to rush all the way back here because Spain was about to go into lockdown. The reason we chose to come back to Andalusia is because we actually have a base in this pretty little village behind me. Literally the day we arrived back in the village and we were unpacking the van, the police stopped us and told us we could no longer be in the streets and we had to be in a house. Now don't get me wrong, we do love this colorful little house, but after being used to van life, on the open road, big wide open spaces. After being locked up in the house for a couple of weeks, we felt it was time for a change. So we decided to move onto our roof and change our lives from van life to house life to tent life. And here we have been kind of ever since. After seven weeks, the rules changed very slightly and we're allowed out up to one kilometre. Which isn't actually too bad. We're very lucky to be where we are because there's so much within a kilometre from the house. Yes, so in today's video we thought we would just show you what exactly is a kilometre from this location and um, do a little tour of our pretty little village. Basically we live in a typical Andalusian whitewashed little village. Which basically means you can't paint your house blue, although there is a blue little village in Andalusia, isn't yes, it? Yes, otherwise Smurf known village. as the Smurf Village, where the Smurf film was filmed. <laughs> but generally you'll find most villages to be very similar to this one, all the houses painted white. Now key features of these little Andalusian villages are... Pretty squares, plazas or meeting places. Now um, our village has two. This one's a little bit more quiet, the main one is down the bottom of the village and that's got like the main kind of tower would you say yeah it's like an old church tower and has several bars dotted around and that's sort of the main focal point of the village in the lower end where they have like the big tent up at new year's and big gatherings for certain festivals for carnival and all that sort of thing yeah so. that's in the center of town isn't it where the banks are and like nearer to the shops this one's kind of the quieter end this one's quite nice so it's really peaceful all you can hear is a bird song there's a few benches dotted around where people gather obviously during the pandemic there's not as many people gathering but um yeah it's really nice it's a nice place to kind of escape the heat in amongst the shade and just enjoy the bird song or a beer and the other one <laughs> Generally, all Andalusian villages are going to have at least one church. Ours has two. One's right near us and the other one is where we've just sat down in that square. Love walking around our village with all its sort of narrow alleyways and streets. A lot of them are cobbled and then it's just looking around at all the houses, you know. No two houses are the same, are they? No, and some of them kind of like lean outwards and look like, you know, they're not kind of, none of them are straight lines hardly, are they? Like our house, yeah, there's no straight, straight walls. <laughs> no two houses are the same and you have all these lovely sort of window boxes and, and all these flowers, especially at this time of year, you have all these beautiful flowers dotting sort of the streets. So there's a few really, really pretty streets in our village. This being one of them, um, which leads down to the main square. People living here make a real effort, put loads of plants out. There's loads of potted plants along the centre of the street and loads of little benches to sort of yeah, chill on. This one's actually a pedestrianised street, so you can't drive down here. And it's actually won awards. Mm. And there's another um, street as well, just round the corner, that I think has also won a couple of awards. So and th these are all literally about a minute's walk from our house. So we do a little dog walk in the whatever time of day and you walk down the, some of the best streets in the village. Also dotted around the village, we've got a number of kind of like landscape gardens. Um, this is kind of the main one leading from the sort of the lower end up to the main plaza or main square. And, it, and it's beautiful, you've got loads of different plants here. I've got these lovely tiled staircases as you see behind me and it's just really nice. You get loads of shade, loads of benches here so you can just escape the, the hot summer sun. 
and you've even got the little exercise machines when we're allowed to um, touch them again. Yeah. Because I don't think we're allowed to at the moment. So we even have a little sports area here in the village. This is like a big indoor sports stadium. This side we've got several paddle courts and we have a tennis court too. It's a little bit run down, <laughs> but... But you can still have a good game. You can still have a good game. We're using a bit of imagination. There's a couple of basketball rings too. So um, a little five-a-side football pitch. There's also a five-a-side football pitch at the top of the village, which is quite cool. Yeah. And they've even got a swimming pool here, which is open in the summer. Two swimming pools, actually. Two swimming pools. Oh yeah, indoor at the campsite and an outdoor one. So this village might be small, but we do have everything we need. We've got like two large supermarkets. Several smaller grocery stores. A medical centre. Pharmacy. Electrical store. Clothes shops. We've got a health shop. Uh, butchers. We've got... Loads, loads of things. <laughs> we've, got... we've got two hairdressers. I mean, anything you can think of. We've got four mechanics here. Yes. Which is just crazy. So Vinny's all right. And most importantly, we've got loads of bars and restaurants. Yes, there's over 15 in this little village, which is fantastic. Loads of different options. And as we're away from the busy Costa, it's so cheap. Yeah, inland Andalusia is really good for eating out because excuse the little doggies in the background <laughs> yeah inland andalusia is a lot cheaper than the coast because it's away from all the tourists so you can go out and you can get like a tapa for a euro you can get like sort of a glass of wine or a beer glass of or beer a, glass of coffee or whatever coffee is a euro it's generally yeah. around about a euro yeah and then you can also get a, a menu as well you can get like a menu del dia menu of the day for mm. around eight euros and that's kind of like yeah anywhere inland is similar sort of prices. So yeah, where our house is situated in the village is perfect for us because we're high enough up to get beautiful views over the countryside and these lovely rooftops. Yeah, but not too high so we don't have to walk up a massive steep hill mm. every time we want to go to the supermarkets and kind of like the main area where the banks are and that main square where all the action happens. Yeah, we're literally two minutes away from that main plaza where all the bars and restaurants are. Then literally five minutes walk from our house, we've got this beautiful castle at the highest point of the village. Yeah, so Andalusia has got a lot of castles in a lot of villages and towns and we're lucky to have one in ours. And it's so nice to come up here and actually get the whole place to yourself quite often. Mm. Being the highest point in the village, you get stunning 360 degree views all around. From this side, you can see across our village, the neighboring villages in the distance, across all the fields, over to the mountains. It's absolutely beautiful. And then this side of the castle is complete wilderness for miles and miles and miles. As far as you can see, it's the big national park and it's just so peaceful and quiet. All you can hear is bird song, insects, crickets, that kind of thing. And it's just, it's just absolutely lovely. So when we first moved here, it looked quite different. It was a lot more overgrown everywhere. All these sort of corridors and ramparts was just sort of dirt and soil, similar to the meadow out the front. Um, and then they spent a lot of work excavating it. So they uncovered a lot more rooms, a lot more walls, they installed railings and metal steps and put concrete blocks to support it. Yeah, just basically removed so much earth mm. that you can now see double the amount of castle, if not more than what you could see a few years ago. And, and it's crazy because they're continuing to find, um, find more of the castle and it's just kind of stretching into a larger area as well. So yeah, it's really cool. There's an area you can do tours, we haven't done one but you can go down into the dungeons at the far end and it goes down quite deeply and then you can go up the tower they've actually built steps in there and now you can go to the top of the tower to get yeah. even better views so yeah. and then there's a nice kind of little circular walk that takes you all the way kind of around with railings mm. so you get to see the view and the castle kind of from the outside so you get to appreciate like. how big the walls are yeah.
Yeah, so basically all of this from where we're standing now, right up to kind of halfway up that main wall was all completely underground. So the amount of work they've done to get it to look like this is amazing really. And I think it took about a year altogether every day, um, full on excavating. 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 Another one of those words I can't say properly. Um, yeah, and, um, and now is and now it's quite a good. It's, it's a good thing. It's a really good feature of the village and definitely worth a little wander around. It's like a proper tourist destination <laughs> or tourist site to visit now with all the railings and there's plaques giving history of what things are like the Roman baths area and you know the archway and all this. So yeah, it's it's really nice. This. So Dizzy is in his absolute element today because there's so many of these little lizards that keep darting about, like gecko type things. And he's just like on high alert the whole time, watching all the rocks, watching all the walls. And we're a little bit worried that he's gonna go, whoa, chasing one of them. But um, we're keeping an eye on him. What you got there, Dizzy? What is it? <laughs> Looks like Dizzy's doing a bit of excavating himself. <laughs> Now, whether they're supposed to be climbing all over the castle walls is another matter. <laughs> but um, we, they're out of control, we can't control them. Dizzy's basically charged up, fully powered in this hot Spanish sun. So he's just, he's just one big fat Duracell battery. What is it? What is it? Is there something there? Is there something there? Where is it? Where is it? Get it, get it. I managed to grab the crazy little rascal. Right, go on then. See, the dogs can't actually walk on that bit because of the grate. And then Charlie now always takes a shortcut when we do the walk. So let's go and see if we can find where he is. Oh, well, look, he's there, actually. <laughs> he's waiting for us in the shade. So the castle itself is pretty old. It's a Moorish castle and actually dates back to the 8th century. But they believe it may be even older than that because it was built over the remains of an ancient Roman city. So opposite the castle at the far end is a beautiful, typical Spanish cemetery. A little bit different from what we're used to in the UK or other countries, but what a beautiful place and location to visit your loved ones. Okay guys, last but not least, definitely not least, is the beautiful river. Yeah, this definitely has to be one of our favorite features of the area. This beautiful river that stretches all the way deep into the national park. There's so many different walks you can go on, either side of the river, zigzagging across, so many nice little sort of beach areas. Just lovely. We love it down here. The dogs absolutely love it down here. You can probably see why we love this little area so much. This is just one of so many great little kind of secret oasis, beautiful little swimming pool. And Nicholas is about to demonstrate just how nice it is to go for a little dip. so refreshing not even that cold just see the castle up there what is it Charlie So this particular spot here is kind of like one of the deepest spots because there's kind of a man-made dam, the other end, which we'll show you in a minute. And this always has water. Even if we've had a dry year, there's always water here at the end of the summer. So it's a really good swimming spot. And as you can see, because we've had quite a lot of rain over the last sort of couple of months, it's really, really full. And it's just, I mean, you'll be out of your depth as soon as you step in there. It's quite a deep, big area. And it'd be really good for the set boards. Yeah, 
there's so many nice little areas down here and in the summer when it all dries out and the sort of you lose a bit of greenery but um, it becomes you get loads of like beaches you get loads of like proper sandy beaches leading down to the river and there's loads of like hidden areas like what we're walking through now proper like a secret passageway that's not that accessible that leads you to some of the the best places it's just yeah it's just awesome down here So this is one of our favourite spots down this river, it's really accessible, you've got this nice deep pool to go swimming in and cool down. So I'm just looking up, there's those crazy vultures. There's loads of them. You can probably see those and that's another thing we love about here. I mean this river extends into the national park as we said, but there's so much wildlife. Yeah. It's one of the biggest concentrations of griffin vultures in Europe around here. Yeah. And we just see so many there's all so the many, time. So many different bird species. Um, we've also got lots of terrapins in the river and in certain spots you just see loads and we even see the snake this morning yeah, didn't I've we? been swimming with snakes before in this river they're not poisonous <laughs> so don't worry guys yeah. but it's nice down here the boys love coming down here Dizzy as you know if you've been following us loves chasing everything and there's loads of dragonflies down here loads of little frogs loads of fish um, yeah it's just it's beautiful and whenever we go for a walk down here we're guaranteed to see some goats or some horses which obviously Charlie loves. So you can probably tell why this is one of our favourite features of living in the village. So guys, that's it for our little village tour for today. We've got so much more to show you, but we can't, oh, we can't fit any more in this vlog. Um, one thing we will say before we get hounded with comments is we're not actually going to name the village, are we, love? No, because we don't want it, you Sorry. know, descended upon by loads of travellers. Yeah, we like to kind of so keep it secret. our little secret secret I hope you understand that but what we will say as well mm. is there is lots of villages just very much like ours in the whole of Andalusia I think we're very typical yeah, how it is here definitely. so if you're in Andalusia definitely um, don't just explore the coast come inland check out some of these villages because they are really beautiful and um, and you get the, the pick of the bunch then because there's loads of them so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and take care and we'll see you in the next one Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Spain. And in today's video, oh no, I don't know what I'm saying here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Dizzy's also crying. <laughs> Dizzy's crying. <laughs> and I've completely forgot what the video is about. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a few really, really pretty villages in the streets. This one. Okay.